So in this video, I'm gonna talk about this 3D printed stainless steel watch. I'll talk about the watch design process as well as what I learned about 3D printing metal and the available services to do that online. Let's start with the metal 3D printing services that I looked at. So I've experienced with some of the different technologies used to print metal back in my college days at Moog Aerospace. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. The lamest method is kind of just like regular FDM printing, except for you bake the part after printing to fuse the metal particles together. Next, there's wax casting. So whenever you see like advertised like 3D printed gold, it's, it's not a 3D printed gold part. It's a wax part that was used to cast the gold. And this is great for jewelry and highly accurate small objects. Next is binder jet 3D printing. This is the first on the list that's actual metal 3D printing. You basically glue a sandcastle of metal together and then bake the sandcastle to melt it all into one solid object. Finally, by far the coolest, direct metal laser sintering. So this is what you use if you need to make an airplane part. You're basically welding metal layer by layer using a laser. And because that's a big and dangerous machine, it's also one of the more expensive technologies. So here are the quoted prices for a 3D printed Benchy for all the services that I looked at. And for this prototype, I'll be going with this option because it's affordable. <laughs> all right, I've started the design process and here are some of the renders that I've come up with. Um, it's pretty fun to design a watch because they've been around for so long that it seems like everything's been done. So it's a challenge to find like a unique take on a watch. Uh, but I'm now going to get them 3D printed, see how they feel on wrists, see the size and shape and form in person. So I did dozens of designs. Um, I've printed a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them just to see what they looked like in person. And I settled on this design to try first for a metal prototype. I'm pretty happy with it. I go ahead and polish just the rim. This is a material that I'm not gonna be able to polish every surface. I'm gonna have to choose certain surfaces that I wanna highlight and the rest will be matte. Now that I've settled on a case design, I need to figure out the dial, and the dial needs to go with kind of the rough case finish. So I need something that like will aesthetically work. And I have a bunch of different options that I've looked at. Um, originally, I thought I was gonna go with this metal dial, but that would almost be too industrial or like harsh looking when combined with the rough case. So I looked at some paper dials. This one actually looks pretty cool. Uh, but in the end, I'm gonna do enamel. Because come on, look at that. I tried a bunch of different enamel colors, but this one right here on copper with the green shimmering effect is a pretty cool enamel color. And this is what I'm gonna do for the dial. This is my first time trying torch fired enamel. So I did a bunch of practice, but I'm still not great at it. I'll link the products I'm using below in the description. The first dial I did, uh, it's three coats of enamel on copper. I uh, got it all set up with a 3D printed ring around it, installed it in the case, and the hole is off center. So I redo it, and now it's time to install the movement. Yes, it's quartz, but it's a Swiss made Eda one. It's high quality. Installing the watch hands was really tricky. Um, I, the, the dial's too thick, I don't have the right tools. I'm not, I'm not good at this, I need to practice this for sure. But I get them good enough just so that they're not rubbing on that super thick dial, and it's time for me to press fit this into the case. You'll see I have these two tabs so that if I want to pull this thing out of the case, um, I can do so with the tabs on the top and bottom. And now it's time for the part that I'm most dreading, the crown. So the crown's going to require some trimming of the case and then the smallest tap that I've ever seen. And after that, I cut off this tab, which I had only added to make the part big enough to clamp when I was tapping the hole. And then there's no way I'll claim that this watch is water resistant, but I do have these tiny little O-rings that I push over the stem. And I add this waterproof case tube just for the O-ring to seal against. And the case back has these two little tabs which are compression fit, so it kind of snaps into place. And I do have uh, silicone sealant, like a tiny bead around the perimeter. And I do think some of that silicone kind of seeped and ended up touching the watch stem, because setting it, there's like a little bit of resistance. It's not bad, uh, but it's not perfect when you set the watch. And finally, I have a press fit battery cover. This is just plastic right now. I've got a lower profile metal one on order. So with the build out of the way, let's see some on wrist shots. I'm super proud of this. First watch I've ever built and it's, you know, got an enamel dial, sapphire crystal, not perfect at all, but uh, pretty good for my first try. I've still got a long ways to go to slowly improve build quality over time, but thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, all those things for the YouTube algorithm and have a good day.